I'm Manish Kohli, Associate Professor of Oncology in um, the Division of Medical Oncology, uh, Department of Oncology at Mayo Clinic, Rochester. Our uh, article, New Developments in the Medical Management of Prostate Cancer, co-authored by Dr. Don Tindall and myself, uh, will be coming out in the January issue 2010 of the Mayo Clinic proceeding. Uh, prostate cancer has, uh, of course, is a very large public health burden. The Over the last decade, uh, there have been some um, reasons for hope in the progress of prostate cancer uh, diagnosis as well as uh, treatment, uh, although none of these uh, uh, have been to the point that they have uh, decreased mortality uh, and morbidity from the cancer in appreciable ways. Uh, the progress on the good path, the progress path, we have seen uh, earlier diagnosis of cancer being uh, the one uh, particular reason why it could have impacted uh, the decrease in mortality from prostate cancer during this time. On the other hand, what we have also seen is with PSA screening, far more over diagnosis uh, of cancers which uh, uh, may not have been responsible for uh, any morbidity or, mo or mortality during the patient's life. So the picture is mixed. Uh, the lack of progress uh, is an issue in prostate cancer and more clinical trials is the only way to go forward in fine-tuning these both these aspects in the treatment of prostate cancer. Prostate-specific antigen or PSA screening is a important tool in prostate cancer uh, in many ways. Uh, most importantly, it helps us in monitoring disease of, uh, and treatment effects over time. The controversial uh, role, although, of PSA is in its screening upfront. To be called a good screening test, it has to show that it has impacted mortality from the disease. And because the natural history of progression of prostate cancer is so indolent and takes 10 to 20 years many times, to have uh, seen an impact from PSA screening and to be used as a screening test, we have not quite gotten over there completely. In this regard, there have been stellar attempts from the PLCO trial as well as the European study for the uh, reduction of prostate cancer, which were published in 2009 recently. Uh, the results were after seven years of follow-up in the PLCO trial and about nine years of follow-up in the European trial. The results of the PLCO trial did not show us clear-cut evidence that PSA is a good screening test which will impact mortality. On the other hand, uh, there were some flaws in this trial in the sense that the level of follow-up, longitudinal follow-up, was perhaps not as good as it should have been and as mature, given the fact that this is an indolent cancer, it takes time for the mortality to actually show up. On the other hand, the European trial, which had a slightly longer follow-up of approximately nine years, did show that there was some evidence for PSA screening um, as a uh, tool for preventing prostate cancer mortality. However, it also showed that you would have to screen about over 1,400 patients to uh, diagnose one cancer and then treat an additional 49 case patients uh, to get uh, the can prostate cancer specific mortality down. So you have to do a lot of work for that one patient that you would save. And it has to come down to society and to uh, medical uh, fraternity and patients to come together to understand uh, how uh, and weigh the pros and cons of these and this argument in terms of using PSA as a screening tool. I believe we need more follow-up from these trials to be absolutely sure about PSA as a screening test, at least in the year 2009. The stellar developments uh, that have uh, occurred in um, identifying at-risk populations are that we know through clinical means that uh, patients who have family members, immediate family members like father and uh, brothers, 
who have a history of prostate cancer that increases the risk of, of uh, the uh, person himself uh, suffering from this problem. So that is an at-risk uh, population uh, cohort. Uh, also, we know that um, uh, there is a higher risk of prostate cancer incidence in African Americans, although we don't quite understand why. Beyond these clinical um, um, issues that we already know for quite some time, there have been recent developments in the in finding out uh, the at-risk and defining at-risk populations based on germline uh, SNP data. And emerging uh, sciences which have uh, come out uh, are now showing us that there is a uh, uh, set of SNPs which when taken together perhaps may identify beyond the clinical factors of uh, family history and race uh, uh, a, a at-risk population. This is although a work in progress and is not yet mature enough again to uh, be identified in a clinic and although only in a research setting. Uh, the after having identified an at-risk population or person, uh, it is uh, now uh, pretty much uh, a good idea to consider giving that person one of the 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, which decreases the active dihydrotestosterone um, moiety, uh, which is implicated and will Im implicated in the biology of this tumor uh, formation so that uh, drugs like finasteride and possibly uh, drugs like dutesteride are good chemopreventive uh, uh, medications uh, either in the present or, or together in the future. The difference between the two drugs is that finasteride is, is, is specifically an inhibitor of type 2 isoenzyme of this particular uh, protein, 5-alpha uh, reductase. Uh, while dutesteride is a uh, type 1 and type 2 isoenzyme inhibitor. It has therefore a greater degree of inhibition and is currently being tested in the ongoing REDUCE trial. The uh, prostate cancer prevention trial told us uh, that uh, there is a good role for decreasing prostate cancer incidence with chemo prevention using uh, finasteride, at least a 25% reduction at least. So that's a good proven treatment already, chemopreventive. Uh, in terms of androgen deprivation, uh, it is the first line of management of this testosterone tumor, uh, uh, driven tumor, and uh, as far as advanced stage or what we call hormone sensitive stage disease is concerned. It is also, although combined with radiation uh, treatments in earlier stages, as well as combined many a times with radical prostatectomy in slightly high risk populations. Uh, immunotherapy has been a recent advance with um, uh, in, uh, in the advanced stages wherein um, blocking specific uh, pathways in the immunotherapy profile of a tumor has shown that it would help in increasing uh, longevity of life in the advanced stages only although and by that I mean either hormone sensitive or what we now call following hormone sensitive disease, castration with recurrent disease. I think the most important thing to remember for prostate cancer is uh, that a lot of work remains to be done in terms of both finding out good screening tools, the follow-up of the PLCO trials along with the ES, uh, uh, EPSRC trial, uh, over time with more maturity of data will uh, tell us much more than what we already know in terms of using it as a screening tool, number one. Number two, it is absolutely imperative that prostate cancer patients be um, encouraged to take part in res clinical research trials. This is what changed the paradigm uh, in decreasing mortality uh, in breast cancer from 1970s to 1990s and continues to be the case wherein thousands and thousands of breast cancer patients participated in clinical trials to bring new treatments to the clinic for future patients. That unfortunately has not happened that robustly in prostate cancer 
So that's the second take home message wherein internal medicine patient, uh, uh, physicians could encourage uh, patients visiting them with this diagnosis to seek out uh, such a clinical trial uh, as is appropriate for this stage. And uh, number three, it is uh, important to work with medical oncologists as well as urologist and radiation oncologist on your patient who has a uh, to give a fullness of approach from all three different angles in educating the patient regarding uh, his stage of disease and his type of prostate cancer because there's a fund of information available uh, in that situation. Uh, the promising areas of research in medical oncology treatments and medical treatments of prostate cancer are some exce exceedingly exciting drugs which we will find out when, we, when the trials are completed whether they actually work but at least based on the biology of this tumor, uh, uh, two particular drugs which focus on the androgen receptor and the testosterone axis um, in terms of um, bringing out a new standard of care after the failure of standard line hormonal treatments, uh, those two drugs being, uh, uh, those two, uh, there are many drugs coming out in clinical trials, but specifically abiraterone acetate in the future uh, is a drug that might uh, be helpful to us uh, and uh, it remains to be seen whether it will get FDA approval to the point of showing that it is effective enough and is useful enough in the clinic but uh, early evidence appears to be very promising in this regard. Uh, in addition to uh, these hormonally driven agents, immunotherapy is a very ha active and hot area being pursued. Uh, uh, which uh, we will possibly see some new advances in 2010 uh, uh, with approval of new immunotherapy-based drugs as well. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.